Because the sooner you learn to tell your message in a compelling way, the sooner God will begin opening up platforms for you to speak and impact this culture in ways that you could never have imagined. But if you don't have those skills and if you are not ready, he will not open those doors for you. Well, every single time I go into a, a room to compete, I always just have a prayer. It's soli deo gloria, which is to the glory of God alone. Well, you can't take any credit for it. You can't take credit for any success because you know that it, it does come from on high. And so every single time I, I speak, you know, the outcome is in God's hands. He can use you in any way He wants to. And that what you've done on your behalf is all a gift from God in the first place. And that nothing that you've done in any round or any competition is of your own doing. It's not a matter of winning or losing, it's just a matter of using your skills and getting the practice and just letting your face radiate with God's glory. Sometimes I get my piece so memorized that, you know, I just start to say it and I think, okay, well, what does that judge's face mean? And should I, you know, maybe emphasize this word instead of that word? And I start overthinking it and then I'll stop thinking about what I'm actually saying and I'll trip. But um, with God, He completely calms my mind and I don't have to think about any of that because I know He's in control. And Whoever's going to win is going to win because that's who needs to win. Mm -hmm. And so I don't have to worry. You can try your best. You can even do, win in your mind, do the best you can do, and yet you might not win the debate round because it's very subjective. So my biggest advice to someone would be you know, do your best, become the best that you can be, but then also stay close to God because he's going to do the rest. Every time I've ever gone to a tournament wanting to win, I've walked away with disappointment. It's great to win, but the thing he taught me from that one was that you can't just let that be the reason you're doing this. If you're going to the tournament you're like, oh yes, I'm here to win, you might win, but it'll still be empty because it'll never ever be enough. To all the participants here tonight, participation at this tournament represents the highest level of competition within NCSCA, Home School Forensics. And this year's 10th anniversary celebration should add to the uniqueness of this experience. The ability to speak persuasively on any subject, whether it's a matter that's relevant to the Christian faith or it's a matter of political importance or something that we feel is important to life in general, is, is invaluable in life. And speech and debate offers so many opportunities to extend those skills and learn to think critically and then persuasively present those critical thoughts. Work for excellence throughout this competition, but trust God for the outcome. Don't trust in the skills that He has given you. Don't trust in the work that you've done to perfect those skills. Trust in the giver of those skills. Well, it does kind of eat our lives, um, but it's worth it because it's a season of life, and it's a season of preparation and networking among an amazing group of people. and. It's where I've gotten my role models. It's where my sister is getting her heroes and role models. And very importantly, I think it's where my brother is going to get his role models for what it means to be masculine and what it means to be um, a man. And um, so I think that it's, I'm okay with it, eating our lives for a few years. Do it, do it. <laughs> I, I usually, I don't know why, but every time I debate, I go up to people and I go, um, hey, so you're homeschooled. Are you doing a speech and debate class? You and they're like, it. no. I'm like, you should do it. You know, it's really fun. And blah, 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 blah. And I go on and on. And I'm like, and I listen to myself. I'm like, oh my gosh, what have I turned into? <laughs> when you're making a presentation as a speech, you don't have anyone after that to argue your case and say, hey, were you wrong in that area? Or hey, I have a different opinion than you. In debate, you get that aspect. You finally get to experience from the other side. You get to debate both sides. You get to see a resolution of resolve that we need to be doing something. And you see, you get to affirm that and you get to negate that. So you get to see both sides of the issue and get a balanced opinion on it. I've learned a lot of humility, even though I'm here in IES, I felt like Michael and I had a quite a large shot at how we did with debate. We had done very well throughout the year. Very, we had winning records every tournament, and then we get yeah. to the one tournament that mattered, or the one tournament I should say that could have qualified as, qualified as for nationals, and we had a losing record. We didn't do well at all. When you don't win, to remind them that that's a character building thing, and that's okay too. Um, and to try to encourage them, but because God gave me the grace to keep a right mindset, keep, uh, keep up the good sportsmanship, uh, some amazing relationships develops. And then the next day, the very next day in my Bible reading, I'm reading 2 Timothy 1.9. 
And I come to the part at, at verse 9, it says, God who has saved us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his purpose and grace, which he has given us in Christ Jesus before time began. Before time began, he has called us to these purposes. The gifts that he's given me have really helped show me what he wants me to do because God has given each of us talents and that 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 shows you what his purpose is for your life. Everyone is, is scared their first time. No one, I haven't talked to many people who've actually wanted to participate, but once you actually get into it, once you make yourself do it, you just, you develop so many skills and you start to come out of your box and you develop so much confidence. Make that cat go away! Tell that cat in the hat you do not want to play! He do not be here! He do not be about! He do not be here when your mother is out! <laughs> Have no fear! Uh, just a second! Oh God, I'm getting scared again! I need a bushel full of your apple courage! <laughs> Oh no, my God is near. All right, I'll tell you what we're gonna do. We're gonna walk around the city once a day for six days. Wow, there's so much talent up here. You know, we thought we were like the only homeschoolers on earth that did this crazy thing. And then I met all these cool people that really loved it, and it kind of, it kind of stirred up a fire in us. You? Good God! You never would have guessed what you think. it can't be true. You're lying! I'm gonna show you that I'm not. I can tell you why your body, the money, everything. What have you done? What have you done to yourself? Stop! Stop, that's not it. Did you hear? I'm a galley slave, a convict. Here's the best what I have to show wherever I go. Jean Valjean, discharged convict. A very dangerous man. There. Everyone has cast me out. I'm reminded that Ezekiel 22.30 says, I look for a man among them who would stand in the gap on behalf of the land, but I found none. Certainly in this country, we need men and women who are willing to follow the call of Christ and to stand in the gap on behalf of, uh, of, of their nation and the other nations. And that's what really we want the kids to do. And we feel like that through their involvement in NCFCA, that that really is a real possibility that they'll do in their adult life. I've just had the opportunity in this past round to explain to a fellow the importance of praying before the round. We, as our group, our group in the hallway was getting ready to go in, I asked, does anybody want to pray? And there was, a, there was one fellow, he said, I don't think I need to. I said, well, you know, it's very important when you go in to defend God, when you go in to defend the attributes of God to explain those, it's very important that your heart be in the right place. My son, at that time 14 years old, was invited to an NFL tournament. That's not football. That's the National Forensics League. You see, we aren't the only people training thinkers and speakers. You know that. Their thinking was fast. Their analysis was quick and deep. They were excellent communicators. They had me at times on the edge of my chair. At the same time, I experienced and heard more profanity, obscenity, and vulgarity out of the mouths of those young people in their platform presentations than I had heard in one place in my lifetime. It was nauseating. We heard a speech against purity as a value, one of the many speeches that were delivered. We heard every abomination known to humankind, not only touted as to be tolerated, but almost glorified. Young people, listen carefully. He said, we have to tell my generation that we should be better. We can train young people across this country to think critically and speak articulately and command the public platform in a way that is winsome and respectful toward those with opposing viewpoints and audiences alike. I receive letters every single fall from college coaches who say, you, you and your predecessors have changed the face of college forensics. That excites me. But you know what really excites me? That in five or 10 or 15 years, your most intimidating opponent now can become your greatest ally to do something incredible for the kingdom. I am thrilled to think about 
not just where we've come from, but what is in store for you. Have a great turn. And with that, we're ready for the championship round. Thank you. The clinical goal was to figure out a way to avoid payment. The diagnosis was to deny. So testified Blue Cross Blue Shield Medical Director, Dr. Linda Pino before Congress. My partner, Rachel Heflin, and I, Cody Hirsch, are resolved that medical malpractice law should be significantly reformed in the United States. You talked a lot about how people are hurt by this. Do you have any quantification of how many people are hurt? Will any more people actually sue? Talking about a doctor's failure to exercise the degree of care to see A doctor sitting far away can't exercise anything. If we work the numbers out, though, we find that 7% of all Americans is actually 10.5 million injuries per year. Now, if I told you to go pick me some apples from the orchard, you went and picked cherries and said, well, they're still fruit, would they be the same thing? No, but the point is oh, that... Oh, thank you. I'd like to move on. <laughs> they're not topical unless they're showing us a doctor violating the standard of care by doing something wrong to a patient. Unless they can show you this, they are not topical. Because this case is not topical, because there is no significant reason to change, and as my partner talked about, because there are significant solvency and disadvantage issues, I would urge you to stay with the status quo. When the definitions clash, please side with the real world evidence that points to the Supreme Court, the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals, the William Mitchell Law Review evidence, the David Bacon evidence in this round that says that medical uh, managed care organizations can commit medical malpractice and that they do. Third parties, just an insurance company, people in a high tower somewhere, determining what kind of care you can have, is not a doctor doing something to a patient that causes harm. So when we look over the round, we see under the criteria of justice which team should win. Please vote affirmative for accountability, quality of health care, health care at no substantial cost. On behalf of the affirmative team and the negative, thank you. example of what stepping out in faith can do. The organization as itself needs people to, to run clubs, to run tournaments, and you don't have to meet a, a strong, a long list of qualifications in order to do that, just a willingness to do it and there's a, the support there to help you do that and that's been such an encouragement because I don't have debate in my background but felt this was important to my children and NCFCA was willing to use me uh, in that capacity, let me start a club, let me bring kids in, um, it's, it's been great that way. That unless with the skill that you acquire, there's a healthy dose of humility, when history reads your story, you're going to be on the wrong side. The right side of history stands with those with a humble heart who believe that all men before Jesus are equal. And that we, as Christians, owe it to stand up for the rights of everyone. Because in God's eyes, all men are his creation. I am an advocate for homeschool speech and debate, and so I am advocating it wherever I go and trying to even uh, generate that interest, not just so that they can have an opportunity to do it, but I want, I want the opportunity for, so that these parents can see it and say, wow, I think, I think this would be good for my kids.